What is going on everyone? It's Brody back again with another tennis topic. And today's tennis topic is going to be talking about how much should I spend on a beginner racket? Now, if you're brand new to the sport and you're looking at the prices of a racket, it can be a sometimes a very scary thing to do because you see rackets that are $250 or $300 or more. And then you see rackets that are like 50 bucks and you see some that are like 75. Like, what is happening here? What, what am I looking at? And that's where, with this video, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna explain three key things that I always work through with people and make sure that I understand when I'm helping recommend them rackets that I've kind of figured out tend to work best, especially over doing this for the past seven plus years, as well as kind of a few different price points to look at, whether you're wanting to be on the lower end for a beginner racket or on the higher end of a, of a beginner racket. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do before I even get into those is the I want to break this kind of like belief that you may have and it's that you need to spend an extreme amount of money when you get your first racket. It's like you need to be spending like the top of the line 250 the $200 for the rackets and you're just like, oh, I want to do good in tennis. I need to get that. And to me, I, I'm just saying, no, you don't. The reason I say that is because most likely from all the people that I've worked it, worked with and even that I had myself happen is that the first racket you play with is most likely not the last racket you're going to play with. You're going to play with a racket as a beginner. You're not necessarily going to know everything that's going on, not necessarily know everything the racket's supposed to do. And you're just going to have your basic skills as a tennis player because you've just started. Then as you continue to develop, whether you're getting coaching, whether you're playing on a school team, you're just playing for fun, depending on what you wanna do, your play style is gonna change. So because of that, there, in my opinion, there's no reason to spend the full price on a brand new racket if you're just starting out into the game. In all honesty for me, I would say you're probably looking more at like getting either a sale racket or racket that's on sale, getting a racket that's already pre-strung but at a lower price point just so you can start off easier and you don't have to wait for the racket to get strung because you don't make you may not know everything that the strings are gonna do. Or you even buy like a second hand racket just to get you going that used to be one of the like two fifty, three hundred dollar ones for like maybe ninety bucks or less than that, depending on where you're at or who you're talking to. So with that out of the way, I just wanna say, you don't need to be spending $250 on this thing, in my opinion. You don't even need to spend anywhere near that. You can find a very nice beginner racket at a lot cheaper price, depending on how you answer these few questions that I'm gonna go through right now. So first thing first is going to be that I will almost always ask is why are you playing tennis? If you're just playing tennis casually, you're here to hit around once a week, maybe twice a week. You're just going out with friends every so often or if you're playing, if you're just playing in the summer because it's something to do, there's no point, there's no reason for you to be spending an extreme amount of money on a tennis racket. You're not gonna use it that much from everything I would assume if you're just gonna be playing in the summer or anything or just once a week. You don't use it that much, so you don't necessarily need to go out and buy something extravagant. If you're just playing with your kids or if you're just playing with friends every so often, you'd, in my opinion, you don't need anything for that big. It's just, it's just not worth it. However, if you're playing to, you're starting out and you're like, oh, I really want to get into tennis and like I'm playing on a team, I'm doing the whole thing, I'm gonna take lessons, I'm gonna do that. And I was like, okay, cool. For you, if you're knowing that you're going to be playing tennis for a much longer time, that's when I'm, I'm a, a little bit more okay. It's like, okay, if you're gonna be playing for a longer time, then we can look maybe more towards the high end of a price point because we're gonna get a racket that will last you a little bit longer and maybe grow with you depending on what you are wanting to accomplish out of the sport. So that's where why are you playing tennis, in my opinion, is one of the most important questions and what am I gonna be using this racket for? Am I gonna be using it casually, just like every so often, 
or am I actually like dedicated to playing? These are the, this is what I plan on doing. I plan on doing this in high school, outside, maybe even into college if I get that good. And this is, I know I wanna do this. And that's why asking why you wanna play in my, is one of my favorite questions to start with whenever I'm working with people to recommend a racket, especially a beginner one. So number two is going to be, what is your budget? Because there's no point in trying to look at a $200 racket if you've only got like a hundred bucks. It's like, I don't take a loan out to buy a tennis racket. I, I'm sure someone may have thought about it before, but it's like, don't do it. If you're just starting out, your budget's, I'm going to assume, not necessarily that big or that large. Some people are. I've had some people that I've worked with to where... They started out and their parents their parents were there and their budget was sky's the limit because they just wanted a good racket for their child. And I was like, okay, cool, but you don't need to pay that much if you're just starting out. So if you wanna do it, you can. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying that if practicality wise, from what I've seen, if you do prefer just getting a racket to use here or there, we can look at more of the less expensive options that fit within your budget rather than trying to go outside of it and just getting the latest and greatest so it can just be a name of a racket that you have. So budget, always very important. Have to make sure that we stay in this. We don't wanna to go too far over budget. Very rarely will I ever suggest someone goes above the their budget just unless it's like, they know why they're getting into it. It's a very specific reason and they want to continue playing for this specific reason and time. And the racket they're looking at fits this description right now. And I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it makes more sense to do this. And that's why we always take a look, always ask, what am I actually willing to spend? And, but, you, but I will always say, why are you doing this? And then what's the budget we're looking to spend within so we can stick around that. And then third here is going to be the age. Now age can be a little bit more of just like personal thing for me. I, especially if I'm working with any junior players that their parents have brought them in because they're wanting to start tennis, wanting to try it. That's where you can start if you spent, excuse me, that's where if you have to get into junior rackets, then you have to figure out what age racket works well for them, what length, because there's the 19, 19 inch, 21, 23, 25, 26, all the junior rackets. And so as their age, as well as their height and everything, it does play a factor into what racket they may work best for them. So that's where it becomes a little bit more important with junior players. But if you're if you're a fully grown adult or you're above like the age of eight, if you're above like the age of 16 to 16, then you're most likely using an adult frame. And then we're just looking at what is the budget and why you're actually wanting to play. Whereas with age, really just is a little bit more determinant if I'm working with a junior person or if or depending on who whoever is asking for a recommendation, but usually mainly with juniors here. So after you, go through the, after you go through these questions or if I'm helping someone and we go through these questions, it just, depending on the answers, it determines like what we wanna do on, what we wanna do on whether or not we go more towards the low end or the high end for how much we're gonna spend on the racket. Low end, if you're just getting out, you're a brand, brand new adult, don't know necessarily what you're doing, don't really care about rackets at all, you're just like, I need one to play with. And I'm just like, yeah, you just need one to play with. Then on the low end, you can do whatever like Walmart has. So those are usually like between, I think it's $30 to 50. Now granted, I haven't looked at Walmart prices in a, in a while, so it may be a little bit under that. Some of the times it may be a little bit higher, I think. I think I was talking to someone today and they said, oh, they had there was a Walmart racket for like 120. I was like, oh, really? and I, w I was shocked by it, but on the low end, if you're just playing casually once a week or just like once every so often, once a month or something, 
go for around here. It, in my opinion, you don't need anything high end. You don't need anything like that. You're just playing here to here and there. You're not necessarily breaking strings so often. The, the racket's not going to be the end all be all. It's just something to go out, hit with, have fun with, and just enjoy with your friends. Now on the high end, this can vary a little bit depending on what you're looking at, but I usually say like $99 to very rarely I'll go like 135 or or right around there. Now the reason I say that is because a lot of times if you look at major tennis retailers or online stores, you can find old rackets that were the brand new versions that was like the $250 ones. You can find them pre-strung and already ready to go. So that's where I will sometimes lean a little bit more towards going on to the more expensive side as long as it fits within the budget because you can get a brand new racket that was just an older model for a lot cheaper. Or you can sometimes find some, co some companies that have older demo rackets or older versions of rackets that may have been used or may have been played with if for somehow they got them back in the store, you could be like, what's that? And they're like, oh, it's this racket. It was brand new, but something happened to it. Or like when it got shipped to them, there was a paint chip in it so they can't sell it as new. And that's where you can just be like, oh, it's this, this inexpensive. Why don't I just get that one? Especially if I know I'm gonna keep playing tennis and I'm gonna play for a long time, then it makes a little bit more sense in my opinion to go with the higher end of like around $99 to $135. For beginner rackets, I personally don't like putting people into stuff that's more expensive than this because like I said, you don't know they don't know if they're gonna stick with it, they're just trying it out. And I don't wanna pressure them into anything huge, especially if they don't know what, if they're even gonna keep playing the sport. To me, I, to me, that doesn't feel right, so I don't like doing it. And these tend to work very well after everything I've seen after recommending rackets for years. So, with that being said, those are a few key things that I will always look at and have people go through or go through with people when I'm, looking at what they should spend when they're getting their beginner racket or their very first racket for the first time. If you like the video, leave a like on it. Comment down below any more questions you may have or any comments that you have. If you've helped recommend rackets before, I'd very much like to know what you think about when you're going through this, as well as just subscribe to the channel so we can grow the channel, get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. There's a lot of tennis misinformation in the tennis community, so I took it upon myself to make this channel to get rid of that so we can get the information out there from the people that have it to the people that need it. And, as always, take care.